This is just a short video um, about a problem I'm having um, with this rifle. Now this is my Winchester model 1894. It's a full length rifle. Uh, serial number puts it as being made in 1911. Uh, as you can see, it's in, I've actually refinished it. It was just a rusty old heap when I got it. Um, actually put new magazine forend and buttstock on it. Uh, the forend and buttstock were from Precision Gun Works. Um, and I also put a, uh, a Repro steel butt plate on there. So I'm actually, it actually came out pretty good. I'm happy how it looks. However, there is a problem with it. Um, it's a bit hard for me. I'm actually filming on my iPhone. But um, if we look at this rifle, I, if I just cock it like that, it cocks normally, fires normally. If I use the lever to cock it, there we go, it cocks. Oops. However, if I do it quickly, like that, you can see it won't cock. So I've taken the stock off uh, and I tried cycling the action without the stock on there, just to check whether there was any interference from the stock. And it's exactly the same. It's, so it's obviously not the stock causing the problem. So I'm going to have to dismantle the whole rifle, uh, get down to the hammer and sear and try to work out what's going on. Right, the first, uh, now that we've got the buttstock off, um, the first thing we do uh, as far as dismantling the action is we take this screw here out. Um, excuse my cat, he's just a real pain in the backside and he gets in the way all the time. Um, there he is there, he's very cute. His name's Pillow. Anyway, um, take this screw, where are we? This screw here out. Um, get out of the way. And um, it's only actually just a plug screw, it just unscrews, uh, and then you'll be able to see the inside or the edge of the bolt. If you look on the other side, you see that hole there? So what you need to do is find a punch that's just a bit smaller than that hole. Um, and then if you just open the lever just a touch so the bolt just kind of unlocks but doesn't really move back you'll be able to see through this hole where you've taken the screw out you'll be able to see the end of the pin uh, so if you just gently tap from the other side and you'll be able to tap the pin out out of this hole it's actually quite loose it's actually the pivot as well you know it's the pin that pit the uh, lever pivots uh, against the uh, bridge block all right so the next bit's fairly easy uh, there's a couple of screws you've got to take out. If you look under here, there's a little tiny screw there. It's actually a bit buggered on mine. I'll need to kind of replace it. But if you unscrew that, all that is is a stop screw that actually stops this pin from coming out. So you take that screw out and then this pin can just punch out generally from left to right. It should come out fairly easy. Uh, then you can take this screw out of here. So that means that the lever and this bottom plate will no longer be connected. The lever will then slide out, the bottom plate will unhook, come out the front and will actually unhook off here off the bolt. Um, and so that'll just, that's all your lever system coming Now out. on the tang here, you've got the main spring. The main spring actually hangs on a little stirrup on the back of the hammer. Comes down here, it's held in place by this big screw. Now you see there's another little screw in front, that's actually just a tension screw. So undo that one first, you don't need to take it all out, just undo it so it's no longer touching the mainspring. Make sure your hammer is all the way down so you've got minimum tension on the spring. You'll find there's still actually a tiny bit of, as you undo this screw, the spring will kind of come out, but it won't, it's not under that much tension so it'll pop off. And when you put it back together again, you can generally just push it together with your fingers like that and put the screw in. All right, now to take the uh, trigger group and the hammer out, 
what you do is undo the hammer screw and take it out and then once you've got that out to take the hammer out you have to remember that you have to both pull the trigger and push the little trigger um, safety knob there so you've got to push that and pull the, that'll let you pull the and trigger and once you've got those depressed you can actually pull the hammer out through the top of the action and then once you've done that this whole trigger um, assembly uh, will actually slide out of the back of the action. So I'm just going to do that now. Right, the next step is to um, to take uh, the bolt screw for the for the lifter. This is the lifter that lifts the cartridges up. There's a screw symmetrically on both sides. So you just take those off, and then that'll come out. All right. So now all we've basically got is the receiver, um, the locking bolt block and the breech block uh, or bolt left in there. Now they just actually come out. You just got to take, take the press, push against the spring of the ejector and that locking bolt could, should come out. So I'll just do that. There we go, so I've taken the, managed to get the bolt locking block out and then it should just, uh, there we go. That should just come out like that. So I've just put the trigger group back together to sort of show you how it works. Now there's the hammer, it's got a little stirrup on the back there. That's what the hammer spring pulls on. Now in the back of this you've got a wire spring, that's the sear spring. You'll see the trigger's kind of loose and that's what I thought initially it may be the spring was a problem. But you can see um, this, the spring actually works on the sear, not the trigger. There's trigger, sear, then hammer. You can see the sear. Now, um, if we let, let it go into its forward position like that, so that's going to be somewhere where it is when the rifle's been fired. Now, as the camera comes back, now one thing I noticed this area here on the you can sort of see how it's a bit shiny where the sear's been rubbing on it. It's fairly rough. So I think that's the first thing to do is actually shine that surface up and get that nice, not taking, careful not to take any metal off, but I'm going to try to get that back to a nice shiny smooth surface, just this pit part here, around to that first bit. So that first bit there is actually the, the half cock notch. See, it's a big deep notch. Uh, and that's where the hammer's ending up. Um, you can see then you've got another bit that the sear slides on after that. So as it's coming back, so pretending like in slow motion that the hammer, the bolt is pushing the hammer back, it's got to go past, it's got to go past there. And then generally what will happen is it'll go past, that's the main cock notch, probably the, ha the, the bolt will probably push the hammer all the way back to there. Then as the bolt goes forward, the hammer then gets caught on that main, main sear. Now what's happening now is for some reason as it's coming forward, it's missing that sear and getting caught there. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to polish up the whole thing. I've got a little Arkansas stone. I'm going to just not take any metal off, but just get it all so it's nice and shiny smooth. All the surfaces that actually uh, that actually run against each other. Uh, clean it all up. You can sort of see it's all got crap on it. So I'll get some degreaser and clean it all up. Um, and then I'll uh, oil it up with some oil and put it back together. And hopefully that will uh, that will do the job. But you can see there's no there's no apparent mechanical reason why it doesn't appear as if it's worn so that the, they won't catch together. All right, so I've uh, what I've done is used some fairly coarse steel wool and oil, and I've kind of got all the corrosion off all the bearing surfaces of these. Uh, in some cases, I actually just lightly used a fine file and a emery stone just to 
try to get it smooth. Um, even the flat surfaces you'll see in here, there's the trigger and the sear sitting next to each other. So they, they uh, rub on the sides of this housing and they rub against each other. And all of those flat surfaces were actually kind of a bit corroded. So I smoothed all of them smooth and oil, wiped them and oiled them. And you'll see here, I'll just um, get the hammer out of the way. So you see here, you got the spring here. So one limb of that spring pushes on the trigger and acts uh, on the sear, sorry, and acts as a sear spring, and the other limb acts on this thing here, which is. Uh, it's pretty. It's a bit hard to see, but it's the actual. See that there? That's actually the trigger block safety. So you got to have the lever closed and be squeezing on it before you can actually pull the trigger. And again, I've I've um, just filed and oiled the side of that to get it nice and smooth. So it and it does actually is a lot smoother now. So everything's a lot smoother. And if you look at this hammer now. Even though the hammer does, is not under spring tension, I think the sear actually goes into that um, main groove um, more, um, more smoothly than it did before. So I'm hoping that that's going to fix the problem. So it actually clicks into that groove much more easily and again I, I used a stone and I stoned the edge of the sear I didn't take any metal off but I just kind of shined everything up got that rough corroded surface off and shined everything up so anyway we'll put it back together and we'll see how it goes all right so I've just um, assembled the rifle again basically just it's pretty easy it's just the reverse of disassembly um, and now I'm going to test. All right, so now I've got the buttstock on. Um, I'll have a go at Turkey, I haven't got anyone else to film, I haven't got my tripod. I'll have a go at so just showing you that this is fixed now. See that? So it's cocked. All right, so yeah. So that's good now.